Hi everybody, this is Dawn with Painted Willow Art. This is going to be the first in a series of Q&A videos. Um, I get quite a few questions on specific things regarding watercolor and I thought I would start doing some just short Q&A videos to answer those questions. Um, they'll probably be done in a series because this one's not going to cover all the questions I've gotten. I want them to be fairly short, otherwise we're going to get in kind of a, an information overload situation and I don't want that. So today in this one what we're going to address is water management, paints for first time users, first time buyers, if you're going to go buy your first set, you know, what's a good set to buy. Um, and then how much water is too much water when you're painting? And we're going to take a look at that issue. So first thing I want to talk about is um, water management. So let me set these off to the side and we'll come back to those. Um, I had a question on water management, meaning the water that I'm rinsing my brush in while I'm painting. Um, a number of people commented that their water gets really dirty and how do you, what do you, what do you do with this whole situation? So, um, the first thing to know is that your water is going to get dirty with watercolor, with, with any paint really. Um, if you paint with acrylics, your water's going to get dirtier almost because it's a thicker paint. So what I do to combat that issue is, is two things. I go into it knowing I'm going to have to change my water part way through. Rarely do I make it through an entire painting without having to change my water. And I start with multiple containers. So I've got three here. Usually I paint with three, sometimes four or five, depending on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm using metallics, I will add another one strictly for the metallics to keep all the mica from the metallics in one place. Because if I start rinsing that in each one, then I'm going to end up with little mica flakes and get sparklies all over where I may not want, you know, those sparkly pieces. So generally I start with three. And what I usually do is one will be for my cool colors. So blues, greens, purples. One will be for my warmer colors, reds, oranges. Um, sometimes yellows, yellow's kind of a funky one though because any other bright color can contaminate yellow. So sometimes if I'm going to use yellow, I'll have just a separate one just for the yellow. Um, so that might add a fourth one. And then I have one that I keep just as clean water and I use the clean water for a couple of different things. If I'm rinsing my brush to get paint off, I'll rinse it in, you know, if I've got red, for instance, I'll rinse it in my, my warm cup and then I'll go rinse it again in my clean water cup just to make sure I've got everything out of that brush. Um, it, it's just kind of an extra rinse. And then I also use this clean water one as the one to wet my paints so that I'm not wetting my paints with water that already has color in it. So as far as water management in terms of rinsing your brush and things like that, I always start with multiple containers of water um, and these are just leftover glass jars from different food things. Size really doesn't matter. Um, I use the same ones all the time. I don't know if you can see this one is really dirty. Um, I'm really bad about forgetting to, to dump them out and the water stays sitting in there and it evaporates over time. And then the paint sticks to the inside of the jar, which is completely fine. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, so some of mine are, are kind of kind of gnarly looking because I use the same ones over and over and over and over again. So. When I start, I've got multiple containers of water. I try and keep same color, types of colors together. So like blues, greens, purples, reds, oranges, yellows. I don't use yellow all the time. So if I am gonna use yellow, I'll probably add a fourth jar um, or metallics a fourth jar, but generally it's three. And then I know that partway through, I'm gonna have to get up and change these. So as your water starts getting dirty, to the point that um, you think it might be clouding your paint. And where that level is, is different for different brands of paint, but a good indicator is if that water is cloudy enough um, that it's hard to see through, get up and change it and bring back some clean water. And just know that you're gonna have to do that a couple of times through your painting. That's just the nature of the beast. So I normally start with multiple containers of water. You don't often see those in the videos because I've got them pushed back out of the way so that I've got room to paint in front of the camera, but I've always got multiple containers of water and most of the people I know doing watercolor do that same thing. They've got multiple jars. They they may not um, do them, you know, cool, warm, 
whatever for the jars, um, but most of them have multiple containers of water for the paint process, okay? So second question was kind of a, a twofold question. What are the paints that I use that are so vibrant? And what are good paints for beginners? So I pulled out all the paints that I have just to kind of give you an idea of different kinds of paints. Um, I do prefer more vibrant colors. So I specifically look for that when I'm looking for paints. And how do I find that? I try paints out. And if I don't like them, I don't get any more of them. Um, I have a combination of commercially produced paints. So this is a commercially produced set and it is very vibrant. I'm gonna talk more about this set in a minute because this is one of the recommendations for beginners. I have this set, which is a commercially produced set. The colors are real similar. These are just um, muted down a little bit. They're more more earthy, maybe, but the they're real similar colors. This is a commercially produced set. Um, this is a little more on the high end. I don't have a ton of colors in this because I started, these are more expensive, so I started with just a few colors with the idea that I would mix them to get to a bunch of the other colors, and that has worked really well. I love this set. Um, this set actually came in tubes, so you will often see either hard paints, tubes, or liquids. These came in tubes, but I really like the convenience of these hard pans because I can fold this up and take this with me fairly easily. So I found this little empty palette set online, bought them empty, took the tubes and squeezed the tubes into the pan and just let it sit out for a couple days and let them dry. And the end result is that these are hard, like these sets that come hard. Because they're watercolors, they just take a little bit of water, they re-wet, and you're good to paint. So I just put those tubes away in a closet, in my the closet in my art room, and then when I need to refill these, I just squeeze a little bit more in them. Okay? So those three are commercially produced sets. They are all fantastic. Those are probably the three I use the most. Um, this one is a handmade set by Tiny Cactus Designs, and I'll put the the names, the brands, the manufacturers, and links for all of these in the description so that you've got easy access to them if you want them. Um, this is actually a metallic set that I adore. I don't paint with this on a daily basis, but I do use this quite often for accents, um, you know, little shiny spots here and there. And it's actually called a color shifting set, and I don't know if it picks up on camera real well, but the colors are actually multicolored. It doesn't look like it's picking up. Um, depending on how the light is and how you move the paper, they change a little bit. So like this, uh, one, two, three, this Omicron goes from a gold to a green. There we go, I don't know if you can see that on camera. In that light, it looks kind of gold, maybe with just a tiny bit of bronze, and you change the light and it goes more green. So it's a color shifting set, which I really like. Handmade paints are going to be a little more expensive than the commercially made sets, um, just kind of as a general rule, but they can be absolutely fantastic. So that one's a handmade set. This one's a handmade set by Artistic Isle. Again, I'll put all the links in the description. Um, this was not a set that I purchased all at one time. I bought individual colors and just stuck them in the little pan that she sent with it. So it's not actually a full set. Some of these are metallics, some of them aren't, and they're just colors that I really, really liked. Um, Artistic Isle paints are fantastic um, in terms of vibrancy and color. They're very highly pigmented. I really love the paints that she makes. This one is another handmade set by um, at Addison and Sedgwick. Um, it's more earthy toned and you can tell by the name on the palette it was inspired by the colors of Scotland so think tartan colors and things like that. I don't use this set quite as much um, but I do use it for things like trees and plants and things like that in my paintings so again handmade very good set. And then I've also got a set of neons that I absolutely love. And these these were kind of a surprise to me. I got them just because they are so vibrant. I wanted to use them to add like punches of color to paintings here and there and figured out 
after I did the first painting that they actually fluoresce under black light. So they glow in the dark, which is even more awesome. <laughs> so again, not a set I use a lot, but I do use it to highlight here and there. And it has the added benefit of glowing in the dark. So it's pretty fun. Um, handmade set as well. So there are tons and tons of paint makers making handmade paint. These uh, four are four that I particularly love and that I buy from again and again and again, but I wanna come back to these three sets um, to kind of address, oh, before I go too far. You can also get liquid watercolors. Um, these tend to be a little more on the spendy side. I do have a set of them that I don't use all that often. There are different manufacturers. This is just one brand. Um, they are different from pans and tube paints in that these are dye based instead of pigment based. What that means is all of these are pigment based. They're, they're created from a powder that's the color. Um, in some cases it's ground up stone, in some, graces, some situations it's a uh, synthetically produced color powder, but it's a, a powdered pigment that gives you the color. And then they combine it with a binder, something to make it stick together and stick to the paper. And that's how you get these colors kind of in a nutshell. This is more dye based. So what that means is this is going to stain your paper more. So in a couple of videos, you've seen me where I've, I've made a mistake and kind of gone outside the lines and I've come back with a brush and re-wet it and then blot it off with a paper towel and it lifts that paint up. It's harder to do that with many of the liquid watercolors. Being dye based, they tend to stain. So. Um, certainly something fun to play with. I, I do play with them now and then, but I don't use them in my day-to-day -day painting. Um, I got them just to try them, and, and honestly, I like these better, but something fun to play with. So back to these three sets. Um, all of these are extremely vibrant. They're extremely pigmented colors, which means there's a lot of pigment in them, so the colors are gonna be bold and vibrant. Um, these two sets, would be the ones I would suggest for somebody looking to buy their first set of watercolors. And the reason, there's a couple of reasons behind it. Um, I am an advocate of buy the best supplies you can afford, which is where this one we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, but I am also a believer in don't break the bank to do that. Buy what you can afford means exactly that, what you can afford. There are a lot of paints on the market that you can get for dirt cheap five bucks a set, six bucks a set. Those are generally considered student grade paints and I do not recommend them for you to start with unless that's all you can afford. If that's what you can afford, absolutely get it and get started. But the reason I don't recommend those is because they're often chalky, um, meaning whatever the pigment and whatever the binder they use, they don't grind them down very fine and they don't get them mold smooth. So they have a bit of a chalky feel to them. And what that means is they don't spread like other watercolors do. The colors don't do that, you know, kind of nice merging and mingling together like other watercolors do. These two sets I consider very affordable sets and they are considered artist grade paint. Now, in artist grade paint, you have a low end of the scale, you have a high end of the scale. These are towards the lower end, but they are fantastic paints. This is towards the higher end and the price, you notice the difference in the price. These two sets, I think, go for about $30, $35 a piece, but a little bit goes a long way. Um, hopefully you've noticed by now, if you've done some of the paint-alongs, um, these colors go a long way. So this set is from Josie Lewis. And again, there will be links in the description. I love this set because it's got some good, really basic colors for mixing. And then there's a few, um, other individual unique colors like there's a burgundy in there that that is a little out of the ordinary but you've got some nice um, basic colors across the top to mix with this set goes for about $35 and I bought this set a year ago and I'm hoping you can see um, how indented some of those pans are you can see I, the pink and the blue I use the most um, I paint out of this set all the time and I bought it a year ago. So it goes a long way, but hopefully you can also see on camera that they're really nice, bright, vibrant colors too. So this is an excellent set if you're looking to get started 
and get started with a set that can help you grow your skills. It's really hard to do that with student grade paints because they don't move like most other watercolors do. And that's part of building your skills is, is learning how the paints move and work with each other. So excellent set to start with, vibrant colors, um, reasonable price, and will take you a long, long way. You can mix a ton of colors from these 12 colors. Um, another good set that I would recommend for beginners is something like this one. This is by Art Philosophy. They have a bunch of different palette sets. This is from their line called Watercolor Confections. This is the Tropicals set. And like I said, the colors are real close to this other set, but these are a little more earth toned. Um, this set has a brown that this set doesn't have. However, you could mix a brown from there. Um, but the colors are just a little more earth tone. They're still really vibrant, really bright. But I, I think maybe you can see maybe with the orange, the difference in the oranges. This one is a really bright, vibrant orange orange. This is more of a brown orange almost. So similar colors, but a little muted. Um, I love this set as well. And I've, I've had this one for about a year. And again, hopefully you can see from the pans where the indents are. I paint out of this one a lot too. So painting a lot out of both of these sets and and I've had them for a year that thirty thirty five dollar investment is going to take you a long way these paints are real similar in terms of quality they're both a nice creamy paint uh, meaning they don't have a chalky feel to them they spread and move nicely they cover nicely they're vibrant so either of these would be excellent excellent sets to start with now that said art philosophy company in their watercolor confections line they have a bunch of different palette sets like this the tropicals is only one of them so you can get on their website and look at all their different sets and find a color combination that you like. They've got one um, that's called, what is it? I think it's called Basics or something like that. That's even more similar to this. It's all like primary colors and, and just the real basic colors that you can mix from. They've got some that are, there's one that's a, an ocean theme. So it's all blues and purples. They've got one that's called Decadent Pies. And so think like fall colors, um, pumpkin pie, that kind of thing. So you can look around and find, they have all kinds of different sets. Any of the art philosophy sets of the hard paints, the pan paints, would be excellent to start with. So you can choose a color palette that you like. Um, I do often recommend something like either of these where you've got some good primary colors because you can mix from those primaries all day long. And what's nice about both of these is these colors are designed to go together, so they all mix really well. Um, you don't generally get any colors that are really um, kind of you know weird and what the heck is that out of these sets because they're designed to go together, they're designed to mix, they're designed to blend, okay? So these would be the two I would recommend for beginners simply because you're getting good quality for not a lot of money and they're gonna last you a really, really long time and they're going to help build your skills because they, they do what watercolors should do, okay? This one is a higher end set. This is towards the higher end scale of the professional artist grade paints. Um, these two sets, like I said, $30, $35 a piece with the, what have I got? nine colors I've got in here, this was about $100. And like I said, this originally came in tubes and I squeezed the tubes into the pan. These tubes are anywhere from eight to $12 a piece depending on the color. Um, it is a higher grade paint. So the difference I notice between this one and these two is that this is even creamier still, which is nice. And it moves more smoothly on the paper. So if I've got a, you know, a wet area on my paper and I take some of this color and I dot it in there, that spreading movement is really smooth. These, if I had that spot of water and I dotted some of the color in, it's going to spread and it is reasonably smooth, but it is going to be, um, I don't know, not blotchy, but, um, I don't, it's hard to explain it without seeing it. Um, they just don't move quite as smoothly, but these are still excellent paints. And like I said, I paint with these all the time. 
I did get this set because I wanted to try a higher grade paint just to see what the difference is and I really really love it but I really really love these two as well so um, when you have an opportunity to move up to a better grade paint give it a try because you do notice a difference in the paints but I would say don't start with something like this just simply because of the cost. One of these two is gonna take you a long way. It's gonna help you build your skills. It's gonna give you nice finished results. The colors are nice and vibrant. So either of these, Art Philosophy or Josie Lewis, are really good sets to start with, okay? So I'm going to use, who am I gonna use? Let's use Josie today. And I wanna talk about the third question, which is how much water is too much water and how much water is enough or not enough? And unfortunately, I cannot tell you an exact answer to that because it depends on a lot of different factors. One of the factors is paper. We will talk about paper in the next Q&A video because I did get some questions on that as well. One of the factors is the paper. One of the factors is the type of paint. Um, using a pan paint like this is going to take more water than if you're using a liquid paint. So it just depends on the paint you're using. And even um, with handmade paints between different manufacturers, you're going to need a different level of water to get those paints to do what you want. Um, brush can even affect it. So there's all kinds of different variables, which leads me to the number one tip that you can do, and that is play with your supplies. Um, paint swatches, just paint random abstract things. Get used to how your paints move because that will give you a feel for how much water is too much and how much is not enough based on the specific supplies you have. Okay, now that said, any watercolor, let's use orange today, any watercolor paper is going to buckle when it gets wet. Um, you've seen me tape papers down when we're painting in the paint along videos to help prevent a bit of that, but you're not going to prevent it completely. So when you're painting, you're going to notice that your paper starts to buckle a bit. And the more water you put on, the more it's going to buckle. Now what that can cause is high spots and low spots in your painting. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to pick up on camera. Bit here. So what I did is just put a bunch of water on this paper and you can see it's really wet because that paint just wants to move and flow. So what that's going to do is buckle this paper a bit. It's going to make a high spot in the middle and low spots on the outsides. So as it does this, the paint's going to run off to those lower spots and what you'll notice is that you start getting darker spots around the edges and lighter spots in the middle. Now, if you're doing something that's maybe a little more abstract, that might be perfectly okay. If you're okay with the unpredictability of that in whatever you're painting, whether it's abstract or not, fine, it's okay. Um, that's part of the fun of watercolor in my opinion. And it's also part of the frustration. When I originally started learning to watercolor in high school, which was 35 plus years ago, <laughs> um, I hated it because of that unpredictability and I had a hard time figuring out how much water was too much and not enough. And I hated it so bad that I put them away and didn't touch them again until about two years ago. It's only been the last couple years that I picked them up again and decided I, I really want to play with this medium and, and learn how to use it some more. So one of the things that I did was literally this type of exercise. Just put a bunch of water on the paper and put some paint in it and see what it does. Now, and I know, oh, I'm sorry, my light is making a glare, but hopefully you can see that there's quite a bit of water puddled right around here, right around the edges, and it's buckled a bit in the middle. So all of this paint is starting to drain off to the sides. Like I said, if you're okay with that, leave it. If you're not, clean your brush off, dry it off, I always have a couple of paper towels or an old hand towel or an old t-shirt, something like that. I do like the hand towels and the t-shirts because I can throw them in the washer when I'm done and use them again. But I always have something like that that I can use to blot my brush off on. So wash your brush off so it's clean, 
blot it off so it's dry, and you can come back and run that brush over some of those spots where there's a lot of water. Bring it over to the paper towel, blot it off, and just come back and grab all of that extra water so that you don't have those puddles. Now once you've done that, you'll see that it now lightened it up around the edges. So if I want to, I can come back and kind of spread what paint is left around to you know, make it darker in those spots or make it more even. But I now don't have all of those puddles around my edges. So sometimes it's, it's easy to do that, particularly if you're putting one color on top of another color on top of another color and trying to, you know, kind of get them all to merge together. You might end up with a lot of water. So clean your brush off, rinse it in your water, blot it on a paper towel, and come back and just wipe it through a dry brush, wipe it through the extra water spots, and it will pull off all that extra water so that you now don't have any puddles. What that also helps you do is avoid blooms. And what's a bloom? A bloom, let me see if we can get this to show up on camera. Watch what happens when I drop some water in the middle of here. Oops, I can't find my camera. See how that kind of bloomed out from where I dipped the brush in there and you get kind of this spreading motion? That's a bloom. That happens when you get um, more water than paint in one spot. And where this paper is a little bit buckled, that bloom wants to push all the paint away from the water and you get this splotch. Now, I frankly like those splotches. I, I have learned to love those and to incorporate those into my work, but not everybody likes them. If you're wanting a smoother finish, do the same thing again. Clean your brush off, blot it off to dry it off, and then come back and just wipe some of that excess water off. Blot your brush, get some more, and then you can come back again and spread it out. This is part of the nice part about watercolor is that it does stay wet for a little bit so that you can rework areas and you can fix some of those things like that if you don't want them on there, okay? Um, now, there are a couple of different ways that you actually get the paint to the paper. One of them is called a wet on dry technique, which is taking wet paint either out of your pan or out of a palette, wet paint on dry paper, and painting that on. Now when you're doing that, you don't generally have a ton of excess water, so it doesn't generally cause a problem. Where the problem can come in is if you then grab another color of paint and try and combine the two, where the two meet, you've now got wet on wet. And you can kind of get a little bit of a puddle there. And you can see that blend isn't very nice because my paper has buckled a little bit and it's the paper's doing weird things underneath, which is causing the paint to push off in a strange way. So again, rinse your brush, blot it off on that paper towel or towel, whatever you're using, come back with a dry brush and just kind of run back and forth between the two. You're picking up some of that extra water and by picking up some of that extra water, you can kind of blend the two together a little bit easier. So in terms of too much water, the things you're looking for are how badly is your paper warping and is that warp pushing all the paint off to the edges and leaving not very much in the middle or leaving weird puddles here and there. If it is, clean your brush, dry it off and come back and wipe it through to pick up the extra, blotting it off here and there as you get the extra and then come back and just run your brush through it to smooth it out if you need to, okay? Now, the other way to get paint on the paper is called a wet on wet technique, which we've done in a couple of the, the paint along videos where you're gonna get the paper wet first. 
And the point in doing this is that it helps the paint spread and move a little easier from the get-go. I will often do this wet on wet when I really want my colors to just kind of merge together. Um, things like the elephant video, where we've got a bunch of different colors that are all just kind of mingling together in kind of a random way. That's a wet on wet usually. Um, by getting the paper wet, the paint is gonna, gonna glide over the paper better. So how much water do you use when doing this? Not a ton. Um, all you're going for, let me see if I can get it to show. I'm not sure if we can get it on camera. Um, all you're going for is that the paper just has kind of a shiny sheen to it. If you pick it up and move it around, that water's not going to flow, it's not going to drip, it's not going to puddle anywhere. There's just a nice shiny sheen on the paper. And then when you come in with your paint, you can see how it, it automatically wants to spread and kind of expand out because it's already wet there and watercolor will go where there's water on the paper. So then I can just come back and spread that around if what I was wanting to get was that, you know, kind of spreading effect, you get that when there's already water on the paper. Now, again, doing it that way, you can end up with too much water, so the fix is the same. Rinse your brush off, blot it on a paper towel or a towel, come back with a dry brush, run it through where the the puddles and drips are that you don't want, pick up that extra, blot it off on the paper towel or towel, and then come back and use your brush, brush to smooth it out if you want to. Now, that said, that that's not, um, you know, how much water is too much water? There, there's not a concrete answer and a concrete way to do it. It completely depends on a your supplies like we've just talked and b the look you're going for i i know one watercolorist here who lives in the same town i live in she uses just a ton of water i can't paint with as much water as she uses um but her her whole aesthetic is much more flowy and um almost kind of ethereal looking in a way, and I'll, I'll link her in the description. Her, her name is Beth Suter. Her work is beautiful, beautiful, completely different than my style, um, and her style demands that she use a lot of water. So it's not a bad idea to watch different artists paint. Um, I love that you're all here, so stay here with me, but also go watch other people paint. Um, you can search YouTube for watercolor artists or watercolor how-to videos or watercolor techniques and watch how different people paint because the look that they're going for also helps determine how much water they're going to use. Um, some people who are going for very, um, very exact looks aren't going to use much water at all. You know, maybe they want, they want to do like a tree and they want it to look like a tree so they're not using much water there's more paint than there is water and you can see how much darker that is than the others that I did with the water so they might not use very much other people who are wanting um, you know kind of a, a more flowy style might come in with a lot of water at the get-go and you know, do something more like this, where they're just letting that paint kind of flow with the water to give them their basic shape. And then they'll come back when that's dry and define it with maybe a little drier paint on top of that wet, but they started with that really wet to begin with. Um, so there really isn't a good answer for how much is too much. It, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you like it more smooth and exact and controlled, you want to use less water. And if you get too much, I showed you the fix, clean your brush, dry it off, come back and wipe up the excess, blot it off, 
continue to do that until you get all the excess water off of there and then you can smooth it out with your brush so that you end up with something you know more like these two where it's it's a smooth transition or a smoother surface than something like these two that had more water so it's really a lot of trial and error a lot of playing around um, my opinion you cannot expect to get better at watercolor without playing with the watercolor. If all you do is pick up your paints once a month to do a paint along video with me or with somebody else, your skills aren't gonna grow really very fast because you're not getting a feel for your materials. Sit and do this kind of play. Um, a really good one is, is an exercise like this where you're trying to get colors to blend together just fill up a page with a bunch of this kind of stuff using different colors and it'll do a couple of different things for you. It's going to give you an idea how much water you need to get a smooth blend on the paper you're using with the paint that you're using. It's also going to show you how your colors play together. So start making color mixes and see what they do. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to take my yellow and I'm gonna take some of the blue, and I know that should make green. I'm gonna put them together and see what I get. Now, you can see how much water's there because you can see that blue spreading, right? So if that's not what I want, I'm gonna dry off my brush, come back with a dry brush, and grab some of that extra water. Yes, it is gonna take some of the paint with it. That's fine. But get it all sopped up, and then you can come back with a clean brush and run down through there. If you need to clean your brush off and dry it off again before you finish, you know, your, your blending like this, rinse your brush off, blot it off, and just work back through it until you get a nice even blend. You're taking the extra water off in the process so you're not getting puddles. And by doing that over and over and over again, you'll get an idea how your colors work together, but you'll also start to get a feel for the paper that you're using and how badly it's gonna warp. Um, I don't know if you can see on here what this paper has done. Um, there we go. <laughs> That's what the paper's done since I started painting. It was flat to begin with. So with just that amount of water, that paper has started to warp. Um, and that's one of the things you need to know when you're painting is how your paper is going to react to the water and the paint. I, this is a Strathmore brand paper. It's 140 pounds. It warps a whole lot more than my Arches 300 pound paper. So again, if you're going to use different types of paper, you need to know how each of them reacts to the water. So the best thing you can do is play. Play, play, play. You don't have to create a masterpiece. Do something just like this splops of paint on the paper with different um, different quantities of water and see what they do. Practice rinsing your brush off, drying it off, and picking up all that extra paint and seeing how smooth you can make that. Or let it go. Um, you know, let the paint warp and bubble and do what it's going to do and watch how it pushes things off to the edge and leaves less pigment in the middle, more around the edges where it's all drained off to. You have to do this kind of play to get an idea of how your supplies work together and knowing how those supplies work together is gonna let you build your skills because then when you do sit down to paint an actual painting, you will know too much water on this paper is gonna give me a mess. So I need to be more careful with my water. And so maybe you'll start that painting with all wet on dry. You won't wet your paper first. You put it all on and use your brush to blend it in with just a little bit of extra water here and there to make it blend. Or if you know you have a paper that doesn't warp really easily, you can use more water and maybe do some of these looser styles. There are so many variables. I, I wish I had an exact answer for you because I know that can be frustrating and, and part of the frustrating part of watercolor, but unfortunately for that one, there is no exact answer. You just have to play with your supplies and see what you get and see um, you know, what more water does versus less water in different scenarios. So this kind of play is really good with your supplies. Don't sit down with the intention of creating, um, you know, a masterpiece or something you're going to frame. Just play.
play, 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 play. The more you play, the better idea you're gonna get how your supplies react together, and that will start to give you a feel for how much water is too much or how much is not enough. And we didn't really look at how much is not enough. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, I'm gonna go wet paint on to dry. How much is not enough? If you get something like this, where it kind of skips around, that's not enough water. That means the paper's catching it, but there's not enough to let it flow. So you might need to dip your brush and come back with a little more water to get that to flow around, or grab a little more wet paint, either one, water or paint that's wet, and get it to flow. If you get that skipping, that's not enough water unless you're going for a dry brush technique. That's actually what that's called. And you will often see people do something like this on purpose to get just a few little highlights here and there, but it's done on purpose. If you're not intending to get that look, it means you don't have enough water. Okay? So I think I'm gonna end that here for now. I, I like I said, wanted to keep these Q&A videos fairly short. So water management, Start with more than one cup of water and just know that you're gonna to have to change that water periodically as it starts to get muddy. Um, Josie Lewis or Art Philosophy Co. are good sets for people to start with. Links will be in the description. And as far as too much or not enough water on your paper, if you get this splotchy look that looks like a dry brush, that's not enough. Usually with watercolor, the trouble is too much, and we talked about that with all these other things. So if you end up with too much water, you know the fix for that is to rinse your brush, dry it off, and come back and pick up the extra water with your brush. And outside of that, play with your stuff. I showed you these two and how much paint is still left after a year with each set, and I paint a lot. I paint every day, just about. So these are gonna take you a long way, so there's no reason you can't sit and play, okay? Um, in the next video, we will probably look at brushes and paper types. Um, and there was a third question. I can't remember what it is. I'll have to go look. But there will, be, there will be a part two coming in the next couple of weeks. But for now, I wanted to address these three because those are the three big questions I get. So with that, as always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will either answer them there or include them on the next video. Um, if there are follow-up questions to this, I will absolutely answer them in the comments. Um, I will have a new project-based video coming hopefully next week. Um, I've got it started, but I haven't finished filming it yet. Generally, it generally takes an entire day to put together a project video between filming and editing and, and the whole deal. So hopefully one day next week we'll have a new project video. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to do that, absolutely subscribe. There's a little bell that you can click the bell and it will give you the option to get notified every time there's a new video so you don't miss them. Um, do go watch some other watercolorist paint so that you can see how people use their water differently. Um, some paint with a lot, some don't. So that's a good thing to, to get an idea for and then just play with your stuff, okay? I'm going to leave you with that for today. So have a good rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Thanks.